Hi, I'm Golf Magazine's Top 100 Instructor, Tom Stickney, in today's Trackman Educational Series. I want to talk to you about screen setup. Um, you know, we have a lot of data points in here that we can look at, uh, 26 different data parameters to be exact. Um, so the way people lay out their screen is heavily, heavily important because it helps to tell a story. Now, this uh, is the way I set up my screen. Um, it was helped uh, develop by Michael Pinky, who used to work with TrackMan as their tour rep. Now he's doing his own thing at Stomp Golf. Um, so let's kind of go through this. I want you to understand kind of where we are. So first of all, we have angled attack. Obviously, helps us to understand hitting up on the golf ball, down on the golf ball. We know swing direction shows us the general direction of the swing from an overhead view. Angle of attack and swing direction merge to create true club path. Now, the club path and the face angle will form our D plane, okay? So this face to path relationship that's formed between these two helps me to see what the ball uh, should do with a centered hit. So anytime the face angle is left of the path with a centered hit, you can see my face is left of the path by 1.6 degrees, the ball will tend to move to the left, okay? We can see this face to path relationship is shown by our launch direction. This helps me to see uh, where the ball started. We know that the ball starts mainly in the direction of the face and curves away from the path. So we can see here when the face to path relationship is negative, we can see the launch direction was a touch uh, to the left. Spin axis. Spin axis helps me to see uh, with the tilting of the D plane and the club used and the subsequent spin loft, which we'll talk about in a second. That helps us to determine our spin axis. This tells me what this golf ball did. Okay, now it's measured for the first, uh, I think it's 30 yards or so. Uh, if the wind's blowing, you know, 50 miles an hour left to right or right to left, the spin axis, you might see this ball have a low spin axis and then it might get up here and kind of curve a little bit too much. Um, so spin axis just kind of helps us to see what the ball should have done on a perfect kind of windless day uh, as far as the motion uh, right or left. So anytime it's negative, it goes to the left. Side, obviously, we look at the spin axis and the launch direction and your face to path, and that creates our side. We can see I missed this ball uh, 30 feet to the left. Swing plane talks about, from a down the line view, um, the line of the club head. It is not a line drawn up the shaft. So we can see that the swing plane number, if the swing plane number goes up, okay, all of a sudden it goes 60, 4, 5, 6, 7, the club, the club head is going more toe down. If it goes down in the 40, 50s and 40s, the, the, the heel of the club's more down. The toe will be more up in the air. The swing plane heavily influences my face angle, which we'll talk about in a later video. Spin loft. Spin loft is the difference between angle of attack and our dynamic loft. It helps to measure compression, and it also helps us to understand how aggressively the D plane is going to tilt. The lower the spin loft, the more compression you have. The higher the spin loft up to a point, the more spin you have. Now, what happens is the lower this spin loft number, the bigger the difference in the face and the path becomes more important. So obviously, if the spin loft number is 10, 11, 12, like you'd have with a driver, it would be a one degree difference in the face and the path would create a huge difference uh, in curvature. That's what spin loft helps to tell me. If the spin loft number is you know, really high, the ball's going to spin more and it's not going to uh, move offline as much. Okay, so that these particular things right here help me to see uh, from a teaching standpoint what's going on about how the club and the ball are interacting. Now, down here, these help me to kind of look at how these numbers are working, but more important, these are my fitting numbers. I have club head speed. I have ball speed. Smash factor is not compression. It is only the difference between uh, the correlation between club speed and ball speed. So the higher this smash factor, the more efficiently you're creating club head speed into ball speed. Smash factor is heavily controlled by horizontal and vertical impact points. If you start missing it uh, all over the face, you're not going to get as much energy out of this club head speed and subsequently your smash factor is going to go down. Uh, spin rate, we obviously see what the ball's, how the ball is spinning based on uh, speed, spin loft, uh, angle of attack, dynamic loft, things like that. Dynamic loft is the delivered loft of the club. Am I adding loft? Am I subtracting loft? 
uh, helps me to understand my launch angle. We know that angle of attack and dynamic loft work together to form my launch angle. So if I'm having trouble with launch angle, I need to look at these two uh, things right here to understand what's going on. Obviously, carry is, distance is carry, and then height. We know that dynamic loft and spin rate form to control the height of the golf ball. And the height of the golf ball is very, very important because we need to hit it high enough where we can uh, gain some distance, not too high so it falls out of the sky, and not too flat. Now, your dynamic loft, spin rate, launch angle, and height help to control your landing angle, and also speeds, help to control your landing angle. This is how flat this ball comes into the ground, okay? Uh, for irons, you want it above 45 in the perfect world. Uh, woods, like your driver, uh, you want that uh, under 40 in a perfect world. So irons are going to stop. The steeper this landing angle, the quicker the ball is going to stop. The flatter the landing angle, the more the ball is going to pitch forward. And then obviously total is uh, the difference between carry with all these factors holding in. Now, everybody has a question on why the totals are so much different uh, with TrackMan when you hit longer clubs. TrackMan measures the carry on the PJ Tour. They've been on the PJ Tour for 15 years. So TrackMan measures the carry. Shot Link has measured the total yardage. So what TrackMan did is after 15 years of tour players, they backed out what the normal PJ Tour firmness of fairways would be. And that's what total is. So once again, all these numbers help me to understand what's going on. Now that does, does that mean that when I'm teaching, I look at every single one of them? Of course not. If I see this guy and he says, man, I'm keep hitting tugs, then the first thing I'm going to look at is his club path, his face angle, and his face to path so I can see what's going on. If, the, if this guy says, man, I don't hit it high enough, then I'm going to look at his speed, his smash, his spin rate, his dynamic loft, so we can understand his height. So all these things correlate to create a story. This is my story. Develop your own.